Hi everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to the dungeon. My name is Robin and today is Lamp Working 101.99. We have made it to the final demo in this series and I am so happy after three years to be able to look back and see this cool collection of flame working techniques and designs. And I hope that there's always something here to inspire you all because without you guys, why would I be doing this, right? So you guys really are the ones that make all of this possible. So with that said, if there's anything you wanna see in my upcoming demonstrations, let me know and I will make sure to put it on the queue. All right, let's get into this final demonstration. It's really beautiful, it's so magical, and it's really one of my favorite beads. And of course, I hope you are all doing safe and well out there. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being a part of the dungeon, <laughs> the dungeon crew. Anyway, I'm just gonna get right into it. I will see you soon in the dungeon. All right, we're gonna start this bead out with a little bit of black. And there's not a lot of colors happening in this bead. Um, it's just black and then we have silver foil and then we have a little bit of the Skyron or Skiron from Double Helix. And then we'll top it off with a ton of clear. <laughs> so we'll just start out though by running a little bit of black up the mandrel. And when I do this, I always try to make sure that the mandrel is really nice and warm before I begin. And then as I'm adding the glass, I'm also kind of heating up the mandrel where I want the glass to lay down. So that will help. Uh, to alleviate some bubbles that might come up and pop. And I had a couple on this one, so I wanted to pop those bubbles and just start to roll this out into a very long, thin, tubular shape bead. And I will go ahead and work the edges and just get this you know, inner core as thin and smooth and as nice as I can get it. And then with a little bit of heat, I'll roll up a sheet of silver foil. And if you notice, I tend to really be gluttonous when I use my silver foil. Uh, you know, I just don't use it on everything. So when I use it, I like to use a lot of it. And you notice that I, I wrapped it and it wrapped itself up several times. So this is a really nice thick um, coating of silver foil. And I am just now burnishing it on. This is super important. I burnish it on as much as I can. And then I am going to go ahead and start to add the double helix. And I'll just add it on as long stripes. Now you can add this color on any way you want. You can wrap it up, you can add it as dots, you can streak it up and down the bead like I'm doing here. Either way, as you, as each bit of this color touches itself, it also will make a reaction. So the crazier you can get on your color application, the better. Okay, so now that I have my color on top of that, I'm going to go ahead and roll it out and just gently even everything out, you know, get my edges nice and smooth and get this ready for the next step. Okay, just more soft and gentle heating. Try not to overheat the double helix color here. Once I see those colors start to emerge, I kind of noticed that if I overheated it, it was harder for me to get those colors back. So I just really gently give it heat. It might take a little bit more time to get to your shape, but it is worth it in the end. And another thing I notice is that this color loves to be heated and cooled rapidly. And anytime you tool the glass, that's kind of what you're doing. You're cooling it down very quickly in specific areas. So I'm using the razor blade to add some ridges all the way around this bead. And every time I press in, it will quickly cool the glass right underneath the blade and 
more, you know, it will set that color, you know, so you have more colors emerging. It's very scientific. <laughs> That's all I can say. I just, uh, you know, you kind of figure things out and forget the science behind it and just kind of like go with what you know and what works right. All right, we're almost done with these areas here. And now the colors are starting to emerge a little bit more. It's looking really cool. And what we want to do now is fill each one of these areas in with a little bit of clear glass. So I have my clear glass stringer and I'm just going to run that clear down each one of those valleys. And this is just like the pleated bead all the way up to this point at least. And I also found that using um, the stringer that you can get from the company is just the perfect size for filling in these little gaps. It's just a super clear stringer from Effetri. But of course, you go ahead and use any clear that you like the best. Everybody has a favorite clear. The Effetri Super Clear is my favorite clear and it just works great for me. And it works good for me with this kind of torch, you know, with the oxygen and the propane that I use as well. So a lot of those can come into factor on, you know, how your glass looks when you're done working on it and how it can react in the flame depending on exactly what kind of fuel you are using. So this is just oxygen and propane. All right, we're going to give this a nice gentle heat. I know I say gentle a lot, but it's like you don't want to heat it up too much. You still, you know, you don't have to smooth that out completely. Ooh, okay, so now the next step here is we're going to tool it a little bit more with that same stringer, and I'm going to go in and heat and push and twist all over this bead and what I noticed when I did this which I thought was fascinating was every time I pushed in with the glass twisted it and broke it off what you see underneath is basically I was pushing that color out of the way so you see that 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 silver foil underneath which like I said I just thought was fascinating so I was really happy to watch this all happen and I'm sure that this would work with any color on top of the silver foil. But yeah, it was just an extra added surprise when I was working on the speed to see that happen. So at this point, it looks cool and I kind of, I like the way that looks. So I kind of want to leave it there. I don't want to overheat it too much or anything. So here I, I'm not going to smooth this out. I want to leave this part of the bead textured. And uh, so I'm just heating it up a little bit and softening everything. And there we have the final coloring and tooling before we start adding many layers of clear <laughs> and the clear is so important so what we're going to do here and yeah this bead looks beautiful you could leave it right there if you don't feel comfortable um, adding the clear but if you do it's going to be so worth it so what i'm going to do is to start heating my glass and i'm going to run it down the bead and every time I do that, I'm just gently overlapping. You don't want to heat up the underside of the bead too much. You want that clear glass to go over a nice stiff um, under color. And if it doesn't fill in all those little gaps perfectly, then you can you know, add those and, and fill in those parts later on, as soon as you're done with your swipes. Okay, now everything has been coated and encased just once. And I just want to make sure that the clear glass goes up and close to the edges. And then I'm just going to heat everything up. Okay, I'll roll it out just a little bit. And then we'll start the second coating. I like to stop and look, you know, at each different step 
you could stop at this stop. You know, you can stop any time, really, but, <laughs> you know, you know me, I got to keep going. So I'm going to add my second coating of clear here. And it is a lot easier with the second coating because you're adding it on top of a smooth undercoating. So this should be pretty simple and straightforward. Just take your time and go all the way around one more time. And at the end, just do your best to kind of fill in that gap anywhere you need to. And right here, I don't feel like I got enough glass on that edge. So I just wanted to add a little bit more so it would even itself out with the, the, uh, the opposite edge. And I'll just go ahead and use my graphite paddle to kind of curve the end of that, that bead and get that clear glass to go up and around that bottom edge. I don't get it perfect, but if you can just tool it to where it's really, really close to the shape, then the heat will do the rest for you and just round everything out. I'm just kind of preparing everything for my final um, uh, coating of clear. But before I add that coating, I want to make sure that my edges and the clear and everything just looks really nice and finished. So I'll just curl that clear up to the edge and just work on the edges one last time. Okay, now we are ready to put our final coating on. And anytime I am looking for the glass to become three-dimensional underneath the clear, I will always add three coatings of clear. For some reason, that is like the magic number when it comes to encasing glass, at least for me, to get a really nice, um, deep, three-dimensional look in all of the colors when I'm finished. So here it is right before the, the final coating. And then this last coating, this last encasement of clear, I, I don't really worry about these perfect beginning and end. I am just kind of swiping it in the center, the most center part and the flattest part of the bead. Almost there. And that looks good. So at this point, because the, the clear glass is already close to the mandrel edges from the previous layer, all I have to do is just kind of clean this up and give it a final heat. And you can see the clear glass um, around this bead now. Okay, all we have to do is this final heat and just kind of round everything out and we will be done. I was so happy at the end of this bead. I was smiling really big when I saw everything just kind of come together from just these few colors. So I hope you all enjoy this and run out and get yourself some Skyron if you don't have any, because <laughs> it's really worth it on this bead. I hope you guys enjoy this one as much as I did. And um, the end pictures, I was just really happy with. They just didn't even do it justice though. But with that said, it really came out great and I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I will see you in another video um, at some point coming up soon. Thanks so much for watching you guys. See you then.